Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Queen's Wish. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that he shows to join me today as we talk to Sage Albinan. Hello. There is a young woman in the robes of a sage here, keeping the records and ledgers of the fort. She's young for a sage. The harsh environment is leaving her pale complexion cracked, and every loud noise makes her jump. The presence of a prince doesn't calm her. She kneels. Welcome, I am Sage Albin, and I will provide all the information I can. How did you come to be here? This is my first mission. I wanted to be in a vassal state. It is how to advance in the army. When a call for volunteers for a big mission came, I stepped forward. It turns out it was the, the, for this Sacramentum campaign, and here I am. You don't sound enthusiastic? I've never been in the middle of a war before. We saw a lot of ugly things on the way out here. It's been an adjustment. Don't worry, Prince. It hasn't phased me. I will still serve well. Okay, I have another question. Sage Albinan talks to you as she tends to the records. Letters and reports are constantly coming in. Traders from the Vol are very eager to do business here, war or not. Uh, what is your purpose here? I handle the paperwork for the fort. Haven is built on paper. Well, also the finest magical and military training in the known lands. But mainly paper. I was going to say ma mostly colonialism, but... It's paper, is it? Sure. Also, I've had to spend a lot of time outside looking over the, su the supplies. No quartermaster. Why don't you have a quartermaster? Also, we have a quartermaster. Just bring them in from the gate. They are, like, outside. It's fine. He died on the boat over. Disease. Chief Gervin told me to adjust. It's the second adjustment that she has. I like it. It's not very common that we see that particular word in this game, and she just says it twice. It adds character. I like it a lot. Any advice for how I can uh, make the fort stronger? Uh, I couldn't say. Not to a prince. The chief might know. Yeah. Any extra supplies for me? Nothing that would be of an improvement for you, I'm afraid. These forts never get the best stuff. I would ask at one of the three battalion headquarters. Their quartermasters might have a, a potions or other nice things. You assume that potions are nice. They are nice, actually. They're pretty good. Um, well, I guess uh, tell me more about the vault. She sits up straight. Now she is in her element. Of course, on the boat ride over, when I wasn't sick, I read and reread my books on the Vol, their practices and history, the Odd Owen Masha system. They are fascinating, easily qualified as hard people, shaped by their land, requiring all standard techniques for dealing with such. Hmm. I'd like to know more about the Owen and the Masha. It's interesting. Many people would call the Owen slaves. Uh, would call the Owen slaves. I hope the justification for why they don't is because the Owen don't think of themselves as slaves. Let's see. However, the Masha allow them just enough freedom to leave them their... Pr oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The justification of they still have their pride. That could have been a thing. You know, that could be in like, a, I don't know, could be like a cultural thing. Or uh, maybe, um, you know, mostly cultural, like a pride being like some cultures on, uh, like uh, see honor as a very important thing. Some cultures see uh, balance as a very important thing. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can work into a, f a, f a fantasy culture to justify slaves not wanting to see themselves as slaves. Giving them just enough freedom... You know, that actually, now that I think about it, that would work if they had, like, some sort of propaganda or some sort of, like, you know, a, a, culture, a, a, a way, like, I don't know, television or newspapers to tell them, you know, it's fine. The freedom that you have, you're not slaves. You're just, you know, you're, you're hard workers. That's what you are. And uh, you might, it wouldn't work. I was going to say, you might be, be able to jump out of, uh, uh, out of the frying pan and, and just climb up the ladder. But no, you can't. Cause that, that, that actually invalidates all that. <laughs> and actually, that, that's, that's really what makes them slaves. Because, uh, you know, indentured servitude is a, is, is a, a different thing. They're still slaves, but you know, it's it's um it's not for life. The fact that I think I would say that this system would work just as well from a storytelling perspective if they weren't slaves for life. And certainly, certainly, I mean at the very least, if their kids weren't slaves as well. Um at the very least that, but then even then I, I don't think it would work. 
I think that just all the Owens being just, you know, they're just indentured serv servants, and they work their debt off, and th off they go. And, you know, just that's uh, a little bit like what happens in Sunless Skies. There's a little bit like that. Uh, and, and there's, I mean, even though it's complicated because the, the subtext in that game is, is, is for a specific... Uh, type of social criticism in in, the, in in Sunless Skies. Here, it's not the subtext is just weird, and it's not even for. I don't. I don't even. I don't, I don't understand what the game is trying to say. It, I don't think it's trying to say anything. It's just trying to work itself out of a hole that it dug immediately when it said that the Owen are are Owen for life and their kids are Owen for life. Um, so if it it works like they they would like after twenty years they wouldn't be slaves anymore. They wouldn't be Owens anymore. Um, then I suppose. You know, you could make, you could give, it definitely could, it, this could all work, but it doesn't. It just super doesn't. And it certainly doesn't work if it's just because of something that the Mash do. Give them pittance and just like, hey, you can, I don't know, go to church or whatever. I, there wouldn't be Christians, so go to temple, whatever. Um, anyway, all this while totally controlling their lives. Yeah, you know. And the Vol are hard people, you said, doing air quotes. Yes, it comes with poverty. And hard environments. All of their energy goes to survival. This burns away sentimentally, sympathy, and weak emotions. This is one of the reasons it took the Owen so long to rebel. Thanks to their upbringing, many of them seem to believe they deserve their punishment. Y you know, there's a little, there's enough subtext, there's enough hints there that you could pick the like thanks to their upbringing what is their upbringing are they culturally oppressed in a way that makes them um you know hate themselves because that's a real thing that happens in real life and history and whatnot and people do yeah that's definitely a, one of the dynamics of slavery um internalized well this wouldn't be racism in this case because this is a specific thing, but but in real life, that would inter internalize racism is a very important uh, aspect of of uh, slavery and slaver and slave systems, <clears throat> and not just that, even even just sort of uh, uh, even like things like cultural genocide, uh, like uh, like what you see for example right now as I record this video. Of course, you might be watching this in the future, uh, like what's going on with the Uyghur Muslims in China. It's that's the same process. It's, there's a lot of things that you could pick up on that, but the game doesn't do that. Their land shaped them, I am going to come to the conclusion of. And she says, It is harsh and dry, very little farmland, lethal scorpions. Most vol spend their lives just a mistake or two from death or ruin, and everyone makes mistakes. As in most places like this, they developed stern exteriors and a very strong code of honor. Ideas of honor and shame control their lives. Yeah, you could have hanged on to that one as one of the reasons why they don't want to see themselves as slaves. Even though it's you'd, you'd need a quite a lot of mental gymnastics to make that work, but you could. You didn't. Stern exteriors, what do you mean? Like their skin? The Vol tend to be grim and humorless. No. At least when you first meet them. They have honor. Sorry. They have humor. Okay, let's reread -read that. The Vault tend to be grim and humorless, at least when you first meet them. They have humor. It is just kind of in. It just kind of embarrasses them. To make their lives tolerable, they love luxuries when they can find them. That is why they value oases. That's the plural version of oases, yeah. And why they make their cities so beautiful. They're grim and humorless, and they make their cities so... They love... Lo they have... I... That... I don't understand what uh, she's trying to say. I think she doesn't know anything about the vault. <laughs> so they're humorless, but they have humor. And they're grim. And they have city beautiful cities. And also they love luxuries. But they don't have them. And they... Sure. Where did this code of honor come from? The vol have always struggled with each other for survival with the lux luxuries. The groups with the best, most efficient code of conduct survived. That code turned, which means that it would be not honor. That code turned out to be, st to stress responsibility, self-denial, and cooperation. And always paying one's debts. This sounds like propaganda to me. <laughs> Just saying. She, this sounds like she read the books of, of the Masha, and the Masha say that and it, it's not really the reason why they developed this a strong code of honor. It's not not about how efficient it is. 
because it, usually it isn't. The co codes of honor would necessarily well, it, it wouldn't necessarily, but it would it would they they would tend to be developed, you know, over years in in the culture and all that sort of stuff to uh, support the hierarchy more than anything else. Not that you can't not that you can't have honor while well certainly you can and should have honor uh, in a, a, a society without an hierarchy, but you know it's just it's sort of it's. It, it, the problem is when somebody doesn't have honor, they will uh, they will eat your food and you will die of thirst and what and 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 uh, not food. What's the what happens when you st oh starvation? That's the one. Um, why are honor and shame so important? When a land is so harsh, everyone can be one misfortune from death. The people learn from birth never to do anything to cause that misfortune misfortune to another. This is honor. Violating this brings great shame. How is loss of honor punished? Death, or shunning and banishment, which tends to lead to death. The, extens the exception, of course, is the shame of great debt. Oh, don't bring th that back in. Please, let's forget about that word forever. How do you get great debt? This... Th no, there's no explanation. This is atoned for... This is atoned for by becoming an Owen. It's better than shame or death. Even though it is a shame as well. Better than shame for lack of honor, is what I assume she means. Do you mean, uh, do many vassal states have systems like this? Yes. These vassals are called hard people. She, that's the second time she says that, with our air quotes, or third. We have, we have, is that the translation for Vol? That, that'd be interesting. We have our own diplomatic protocols for dealing with them. Trade with ha Haven tends to make these vassals richer and safer. And then the code of honor fades. Wow. She's just advocating for keeping the colonies in, in, in poverty so that they that they are, don't become rebellious, basically. The code is right. What, what fate do such nations have? Let's find out exactly what happens when they become um, rebellious. Slow decline, usually. No ruler or written law can force a citizen to work for the good of a nation. N no? No, it's usually the police that will arrest people for if they don't work for the good of the nation. If if it you know like the Owen, uh, in the nation here being the Masha, a cultural sense of morality and honor is the most reliable shaper of, of a citizen. Once the well, the police is also pretty reliable. It's just it, and also it is the one that is used over here. Considering they have a freaking rebellion, and they are in a war. So here the police and the military are you know the, the the distinction between police and military is a modern day thing and it wouldn't exist in a setting like this. Uh, so when I say police, I mean the military and just the armed forces um, of the government of the Masha in this case. So they would be the ones that are actually <laughs> this th this is why I say this sounds like propaganda of the Masha because she's she's emphasizing how the cultural sense of morality and honor is the most reliable shape of sh shaper of a citizen when in reality what really shapes um, the 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 citizens is the army. Well, at least the, what really shapes the Vol, or sorry, the um, the Owen is the army because they hunt them down because they're rebelling. And yeah, once this is gone, corruption follows. Corruption, hmm. which kind of hints at it being in the higher echelons of society here, right? Because that's what you think of when you think corruption, even though it's not necessarily what what it means. But anyway. I'm not sure I agree. <laughs> I'm not sure I agree, but I, I don't know why I wouldn't agree. I'm not sure what this means. I'm not going to say I'm not sure I agree. I'm sorry, Prince. This is Standard Haven Doctrine. Yes, I got that impression. I did. But Standard Haven Doctrine is set by you. You can always change my views for me later. But now I am rambling. I'm sure these debatable lectures are not... Debatable? <laughs> lectures are not helpful to you. Well, they are pretty fun. I like that. It's better than that dialogue that we had over there. That's for sure. They're fun. They're fun. I like them. Yeah. Let's go upstairs. And we have Nach Smooch. Nope. Snooch is his name. You meet a Havenite in dark, severe clothes. He walks from crate to crate, mumbling numbers to himself and checking a clipboard heavily, uh, heavy with ledgers. Occasionally, he consults one as he looks inside a crate. Even up close, he ignores you until he sees the royal insignia on your chest. Once, oh, sorry, one prince noted. He doesn't make eye contact, he just marks his clipboard. I am Nak Snooch, royal auditor. What's a royal auditor? 
He looks past you as he answers, I verify our current inventories, our resources, coin, and such for the queen. I make sure all the numbers align. What do you mean numbers align? I look for inconsistencies in numbers between what officials and sages report having and what is actually present. What happens if you find inconsistencies? This indicates corruption, which will not be tolerated. The Queen was explicit. It is in Haven's interest that graft, bribery, thievery in is kept to acceptable levels, no matter how remote the vassal is. And also we have heard already that the Queen deliberately lets them be a little bit corrupt so that she doesn't have to pay them or something. Thus, I investigate all inconsistencies. Typically, I find who is responsible and deal with it before they try to kill me. Now, please excuse me, Prince. Chief Gervin undercounted his supply of medium ceramic jugs by at least three. Uh, why the clipboard? He looks past you as he answers. The Queen requires documenta documented ver verification. Organized organ order Ordered organization is key to see if the numbers align. You work for my mother? His head gives a little confused tilt, like a dog. I work for Mid Mindwell, Mindwell and Snooch. We have one client, the Queen. You've heard of them. They are your mother's private accounting firm. Apparently, they do more than just giving you your allowance of gold every week. Private accounting firm? That implies a bourgeoisie system which implies that there are royal companies. And why would my mother not have a royal company that serves at the behest of the queen? Hmm. This feels like corruption, honestly. <laughs> it, it, that's, that, that just sounds like what corruption would be. But then again, considering who my mother is. Uh, are, are, are the snooch of Mindwell, Mindwell and snooch? No, that was my great-grandfather, Bushrod. Bushrod Snooch. Like me, most of his descendants have joined the firm. I hope my children will do the same. That sounds like, um... What's the word for when you benefit your family in a system that... You, it's nepotism. That sounds like nepotism. Yeah. Uh, that's all for now. Thanks. So, corruption. More corruption. Nothing here inside this box. I can sleep if I want to. Aha. Uh -huh. More boxes. With copper bits that are not mine. But there's, then again, there's nobody over here, so they are mine. And a bronze dagger that uh, is mine now, too. I need to sell some of this stuff. If not all of this stuff. We'll figure it out. We have plenty of inventory space. Haven soldier going around. We got some boots on the floor. And we have an iron chain helm that is not mine. And he's actually quite good. And I got some silver coins. So all I do is this. And wait for the Havenite soldier to flee. Hopefully. Not flee. <laughs> monies. Good monies for me. So what is this thing? This is quite good. You have a bad. You have a bad. Why do you have a bad? Don't have a bad. Have a good. An Ahrial cow. Do you have a worse? Yes, you do have a worse. You both have a worse. No, that's not where. I, where what I want. I want this. Good. Our inventory is a little bit overburdened, but it's fine. Where's the budget? The budget? What do you mean budget? That's that's not a physical item. It's like asking, where's the sadness? Or, uh, where's the freedom? I suppose, the the. Those would be. Those would be a little. Both of those would be a little bit more. Would work a little bit better. If you just ask that. I need more sadness up in here. Or freedom. Or, oh, where's my freedom? Or something like that. Um, so. That's good. And now we're leaving. Uh, we have places to be. The Meyer Lang. No, that's not where we are. Uh, yeah, let's explore the rest. Uh, probably leave. Well, I'll leave through here because I don't think I explored this properly. On this side. I have indeed. Mm hmm Okay, let's go. I didn't mean to do that, but it works. Uh, let's also save the game, just in case, because we don't know what kind of terrible things we're about to encounter and die to. And, uh, yeah, let's just move on. What is that? Oh, that's one of those. It doesn't tell me what it is. 
There are several large farmhouses ringing Fort West Bay, waiting for settlers to come and rebuild them. The few patches of land in the vole that can supply cro uh, support cor crops are very valuable. Again, I'm pretty sure these things are supremely fertile. But again, hmm. This side of the river, the ground is littered with bleached bones and shedded lizard shedded lizard scales. No fresh human tracks. Not even your scouts have come over here. The vol abandoned this land to monsters. It happens sometimes. There are always more monsters. Sometimes as in... Is it like a, a, a seasonal thing where they ab abandon the land? The lands to the north are blasted and dead. There is an old road slowly vanishing into the sand and dust. There are no signs of anyone traveling up here recently, at least on foot. As you look around, a shadow rushes towards you. You look up and see a huge dragon. It circles It circles over you several times, looking you over. You ready your weapons. It decides that it doesn't like the odds and flies off to the west. That's curious. Dragon battles are really difficult in, in games by Spiderweb Studio. I'm avoiding all the things. As you walk around the shore, a shadow flies over the mountains to the south toward you. To, to the south toward you. You fling yourself to the ground as a screeching drake streaks, streaks past you just overhead. It bangs around and flies towards the quarry to the southwest. It's trying to scare you off. Sutter wouldn't turn back. He'd want to, to mount the thing's head on his wall. You, on the other hand, slowly consider being scared off. I consider it slowly? Hmm, because of the processing. It's like processing power is very bad. I assume the dragon is, is going to be here. I, I'm i going to say so. You enter another quarry of the vole. It has been abandoned for years. The tracks are almost buried in the dirt. Or in dirt. The carts are rusty. You smell a wisp of sulfur in the breeze. Odd. Even you notice movement to the southwest. Oh, then you notice movement to the southwest. Okay, which might be where we're supposed to go first. Got things in here. Stone blocks. I don't need those. No movement so far. Uh, I saw that. <laughs> it's a freaking dragon outside. There's also serpents in here. Murder the serpents with uh, your blades and whatnot. Uh, okay, murder, murder that serpent because I think the other one is not going to catch me. I can't go there, can I? I can. Oh. Haste. Ten damage. Not that great. Those evasions are nasty. Uh, that evasion. Nice. Kill. Okay, there's more. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Are they immune to poison? They're not. Ooh, there's a lot of them. Okay, um, what do I want to do? I want to attack that one so I can do a whirlwind. That's a haste. That's poison resisted, which is really nice. And Mario is going to do amazing things. I'm going to put him over there. Maybe I'm going to hit that one. No. Didn't hit that one. An evasion! Very nice. Let's get another whirlwind in here. So much bacon. I love it. Um, okay. If it's the last one. Uh, more damage. No poison, though, so I like it. Uh, poison. Evasion. Kill. And you're taking poison. I'm gonna press space. I'm gonna do a cure. Yeah. I absolutely need to do a cure here. And we're gonna lose one energy over here, but everybody else is good to go. Pretty good. I'm satisfied with the result of this. Gold goblet for very little money and a little bit of stone. It's fine with me. Nothing else. Not that I can see. I just wanted to get through this door. Oh, it leads downstairs. This door is secret. No, I mean, it's not. It holds something. What do we have? That's the way out. Towards the dragon. And there's nobody over here. Okay, let's murder that dragon outside. Let's also save just in case. Ooh, there's an old drake perched on the edge of the quarry. You recognize her. She is the drake you saw flying over you outside. She's old and slow, and her sides bear many scars. You weren't foolish enough to under underestimate her, though. These beasts are full of 
powerful magic. She stares at you as you approach, silently evaluating you. Who are you? She says, ah, we will see if you can earn my name. She step, uh, then she steps backwards and drops into the pit. You run to the edge to see her flapping wings. She, and also her flapping, the, the flapping wings. She lands on the rock below and walks out of sight. Hmm. Curious encounter. Just in time for the end of the episode, because we're out of time. So, just in time for the out of time? That's, yeah. I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Queen's Wish. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.